Ladies and gentlemen, the carousel with Insu Snuff brings you our main event tonight. Before we get to that, let's welcome the carousel dancing girls. <laughs> Super Sport and Cedric Kirshner present the IBF Bantamweight Championship of the World. Over 12 rounds between the champion Orlando Canizales and challenger Juvenal Barrio. This bout is sponsored by the Insu Snuff and comes to you live from the carousel. Orlando Canizales, the champion from Laredo, Texas, with a professional record of 34 wins, one loss, one draw, and one no contest. Rated as one of the top fighters, pound for pound, in the world. Won the IBF Bantamweight title in July 1988 when he stopped Kelvin Seabrooks in the 15th round. He's made 12 successful title defenses, starting a professional career in August of 1984, with only one loss in his long and exciting career. A well-schooled fighter and pinpoint puncher with knockout power in both hands. Juvenile Barrio, the challenger from Colombia, with a professional record of 28 wins and only three losses, made his professional debut on October 5th, 1987, and he's a well-schooled fighter with knockout power. He's rated number one by the IBF and is a mandatory challenger for the title. He likes to mix it up and is on a nine-fight winning streak with eight inside the distance. You'd better stand by for a non- Stop action! Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring on our boxers for our main event tonight, starting off with the challenger from Colombia, Juvenal Berrio.
And ladies and gentlemen, the IBF bantamweight champion of the world, Orlando Canizales. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to bring into the ring Mr. Stuart Shaw, general manager of the Carousel, who is fast creating a boxing mecca in Southern Africa, to wish both boxers good luck for the big fights. Mr. Stuart Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Stuart Shaw. Give him a big round of applause as he leaves the ring and also to our carousel dancers. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Bantamweight Championship of the World. This fight, is, uh, this fight is being supervised by Mr. Walter Stone of the IBF, is sanctioned by the IBF and will be fought under IBF rules. It's a 10 point must scoring system. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. The bell cannot save a boxer in any round and only the referee can stop the fight. Your officials for this bout. Your referee from Texas is Mr. Barry Yates. Your judges from Johannesburg in South Africa, Mr. Alfred Gupuana. From Colombia, Francisco Hernandez. And from Miami in the United States, William Ray Jr. And now introducing the contestants, starting on my right. He's wearing the black and white trunks, weighing in at 53,52 kilograms. In 31 contests to date, 28 victories and only three defeats, 18 of them by KO, ranked number one by the IBF, fighting out of Colombia, Juvenal Berrio. And introducing on my left, wearing the plain blue trunks, he weighed in at 53,52 kilograms. In 36 professional fights to date, 34 victories, 21 by KO, one draw, and only one defeat. Fighting out of Texas, in the United States of America, the current IBF bantamweight champion of the world, Orlando Canizales. Hi guys, Showtime, this is Julie. Obey my commands. Good luck. Here in the carousel, we have Orlando Canizales, a legend in his own time, defending his IBF Phantomway title against Juvenile Berrio from Colombia. I'm Leonard Neal with me at ringside, Brett Taylor. Good evening, Len. Len, uh, in Orlando, Orlando Canizales, we've got one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world today, and this is his 13th time he'll be defending his title. He's also rated at the moment number five among all-time fighters in the world currently in action which means we really are seeing 
well, the fifth best fighter in the world on that rating. But against him, a young man who we've seen in training, a very fast mover, a snappy boxer, and a good right-hand puncher. Against that, that tremendous left hook, which Kevin Harder's left is known to have. He's knocked out some opponents with it in devastating fashion. And so it's going to be a battle between the experience and the big right hand of Kevin Harder's, the speed, the young durability, and the good right hand of Juvenile Barrio. At the moment, we have a little bit of light problem in the stadium. Let's hope it doesn't affect the boxing in any way. The lights have been flashing off and on, but here they go into the action. And it's fast for the first round of a 12-round bout. Two superbly matched, superbly fit bantamweights. And I think we're going to have really outstanding action. And immediately, it's Orlando Kinizoli is on, on the uh, grass, pushing um, his opponent back all the time. And the strength with Orlando, Leonard, is that he can take you out with the other hand. His pinpoint accuracy. Well, Barrio, of course, has to be aware of that left hand from Kenneth Dollars. It's, it's probably pound for pound as devastating as any blow in boxing today. He's, we've seen him knock out opponents. Billy Hardy, one of them, the British bantamweight champion at the time. And there goes the left hook. Barrio able to keep out of the way of it. Barrio himself much the faster of the two in hand speed and he has that very very good straight right and right cross which will come into play no doubt in, in very quick time once he gets his distance gets going but right now it looks like a very determined Cannonsales they both were a little bit overweight in the way in last night but no trouble came in on the limit against two strong effective young men and as Barry are trying to keep Cannonsales back with their left jab, Kenizoli is slipping the punches nicely and countering with his own left and right. Looking for the opening, Kenizoli is using the ring very well at the moment. Not a lot happening. The right hand goes in from Kenizoli, but using the ring very well as this champion, moving around and gliding around. In fact, in very effortless fashion. There goes another right hook. Seems to be favouring the right at this stage of the fight more than his potent left. But it, and there goes the left hand. Very able to take most of that blow on the glove. But that, at the end of the first round, signaled that the Canazola's left hand is there to be respected. A little bit busy with your left hand and try to not walk straight at him. He's trying to hit you with the right hand, all right? A little grease. And then we see some slow mo from the first round. And it's a great left hook that Orlando Kenizoli catches Barry on the on the side of the face, and Barry returns with one of his own. Huh? <laughs> Well, I hope the viewer in Spanish is better than mine because all those commands from the Colombians to their fighter in the corner. But Canizal is himself told to beware of the right hand. He's trying to set you up for it, says Jesse Reed, the trainer of the world champion. There's the Canizal's left hand going in. Very, very fast on his feet is Canizal has been suggestions that after all these years in the ring he might be slowing down a bit he might be losing some of his grip right now he looks like there's no slowing down on those legs they're moving around pretty fast for a little man for an aging fighter and yet surprisingly they're both only 27 and as always turns 28 next week well, there's certainly no evidence of other guys slowing down Leonard and we can see the class and Kenny Zoli's the way he moves around slipping those punches and counting with his chest, but it's a powerful right hand of Berrio that Kenizoli is going to have to watch out for. He's very, very fast with his hands, as Berrio. We've seen him in training. He has tremendously fast hands. When he really lets go, they blaze through the air. And a very hard man to catch. Kenizoli is trying with the left hand. Something wrong with the glove. Another glove. And the referee has indicated that the glove 
Has the glove split? Yes, it would appear that the, the right hand glove has split. And so there's a stoppage in the fight. No, oh, sit down. Canizales goes back to his corner, sits down, and a new pair of gloves are brought in. Get away. Get away. And there we see that left straight right, right down the middle, catching Canizales on the side of the chin. And that is the punch he's going to have to look out for tonight, then. Well, that is the punch which Barrio has shown throughout his training has been his real strong point. And if he's going to use it like that, Canizales is going to have to use all his experience to keep out the way. You can sit down. Rapid changing as the gloves going on in the corner here. And then we see that right hand going over Canizales' head. Canizales countering with his own right hand. Oh, no, no, no! Need that glove! I need that glove! The glove thrown by Ivan Ferris, the manager of uh, Barrio, into the crowd. But of course, referee Barry Yates calls for it to come back because they've got to put it forward to the official IBF commissioner so that he can certify that the glove did burst during the action. While we talk about this, you'll notice uh, the introduction of the two fighters to the ring. Barrio was brought into the theme song from Shaka Zulu. Interesting that because he told us during training here that while Canizales waits patiently on his corner stool there, Barrio had told us during training that Shaka Zulu had become his, his hero. He'd watched the film three or four times. And that's why the theme song was played to bring him into the ring. Well then, uh, not often does a fighter get a chance to fight for a world title. And Barrio's gonna put everything in it tonight. It could be his last shot at it. Well, the gloves are back on. Referee Barry H says it's okay. Calls Time. for the action Stop. again. And here we're back into this delayed second round between Juvenile Barrio, the challenger from Colombia, and world champion Orlando Canizales, who takes a wacky good right hand to the head from the challenger as they start action once again. Both fighters very busy landing devastating blows then. One wonders how guys can stand up to those kind of punches. Of course, they, their rapid movement, their body movement, enables them to ride a lot of the blows. A, a lot of the power is taken away from their actual swaying and bobbing and weaving. That's right, and also the superb conditioning of both fighters here tonight. Perio depending largely on that right hand. But Cavazola's at the moment using more movement around the ring, setting himself up better. Perio's inclined to come straight in on his man all the time, and that may be a little dangerous against a puncher like Cavazola's. That's right, and you'll notice Canizales shifts from side to side, keeping Barrio guessing, and then Barrio misses with a wide left uppercut to the body. It's the more composed of the pair right now is Canizales. Barrio's doing a lot of body movement, not a lot of leg movement. And it's up to Canizales to try and find the range for those potent hooks of his, especially the left hand. He's obviously going to play on that one and try to get through to his man as much as he can, but a very fast-moving young man is this Barry Very nice. Just keep getting points, all right? And there we see Kenny Zola's left hand catching Barry on the chin. And Berrio counters with one of his own. Yes, you have. It ain't coming to you. Just start countering shit out. And, and keep, keep moving, moving to the right, away from the right, right hand. All right? One more shot of water. All right. A little bit down in the shorts. Papa, no, 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 Round three, as Orlando Canizales comes off his stool with a warning, keep moving to your right to keep it away from that right hand of Barrios. They're showing respect for it in the champion's corner, and well they might do as well, because that right hand of, of Barrios is fast, and it carries a lot of weight behind it. That's right, Lynn, and he's been instructed to counter-punch. And it's Barrios, the taller fighter in the black shorts, 
against the champion Orlando Kenizolis in the blue and white striped shorts. One thing I notice about Kenizolis, he's not putting a lot of combinations together. He's using one punch at a time at the moment. He might have to step up the rate in that respect because when Berrio does get moving, he blazes away with two or three punches at a time. One would expect Kenizolis to do a little bit more in that way. Kenizolis nearly moved right into that right hand then. I think Kenizolis is still trying to fathom away or staying out of the way of that right hand. Yes, he's got to get past the right hand as the danger point in order to land his own left hook. And that's what he wants to do, but in order to land the left hook, he's got to come straight in on the right, and that's the danger. It's going to be a case of which lands the big shot first. Well, both boys showing a lot of speed here in Orlando, working that left, and he follows it up with a nice right hand there. Yes, that was the best one too that uh, Cannon's Island has thrown so far. Perio getting through with some nice close range work, but keeping most of it at, at long range. Nice left jab he pushes out every now and again with Perio. And as always, not much in that respect. Flashes his left, but it doesn't have a lot of power behind it. Barrio picking his punches beautifully. They're catching Orlando on the chin. Orlando counters with an overhand right there that catches Barrio on the side of the head. Yeah, Barrio moves away from that punch very well with the overhand right. As it comes through, he turns his body sideways, takes it on the side or back of the head each time. I think Berrio is going to have to keep that jab in. Oh, oh, beautiful right hand from Orlando. And the left hand follows over the top. That's better from Canizales. He's finding his range now. He's getting in closer, and that's where he's going to be a dangerous man. So Berrio is going to have to keep that jab. He's got the reach, ran, and not give Orlando time to settle down to unload on those punches. Canizales unloads another left hand. Didn't quite get through with it properly, but it bounced down Berrio's nose. You can see now that the champion's finding his range a great deal more effectively. But good left hand work coming from Berrio. Nice jabbing going on from the challenger. <laughs> the end of round three. see some close-up action with that beautiful right hand they caught Barrio on the side of the chin. But as you can see, he didn't flinch. Then he came right back with some punches of his own. I think that's an indication yeah. of fitness. These are two very fit young men. Nice. Just a whacking right hand from Kenneth all those very nice. how Canizala stays on his stool right until the bell rings. Cons uses every possible minute of relaxation time to his benefit. That's an old pro for you. You know, being the short to fight, he counters very well with that left jab, and he's catching Berrio with it. But Berrio's a crafty customer. He's going to watch out for that right hand. And as I said, the right hand lands on the side of Canizales' head. Nice body movement coming here from Canizales. No doubt he's been dropping underneath those punches from Berrio, swaying side to side and getting out of the way. Just flipped his head backwards there as the right came through. That shows signs of that little touch of class that counts when you are a champion and you're going in for your 13th defense. Barrio using the ring quite wisely there. Staying out of the reach of Orlando Canizales. And it's Orlando Canizales throwing the right hand to the body of Barrio. Yes, we aren't seeing the right hand coming from Barrio quite as much this round as we, we did in the previous rounds. He seems to be holding it back a little bit. 
Orlando starting to unload on that oh, left there goes the right. left. That's the punch. That's the one from Barrio that we're waiting for. That's Barrio's most dangerous punch. Orlando can throw both punches equally good. Barrio's going to have to look out for that left hook. Yes, Barrio seems to be waiting, looking for that opportunity to counter over Cannondale's left hand. That's when he really got through with the right hand that time. And he gets through with it again. High up on the head, unfortunately, but he's countering the right rather than leading with it now. Canizal is really getting into the action more than he was before. Hooking that left, hooking it a bit too far around, perhaps, for it to be effective. That's right, but one good thing is... Uh, but like Kenizali switches the attack from body to head, he jabs to the body, up the barrier comes back to the nice body blow himself, but he's been concentrating on the head. Yeah. Up from now. The left hand went through there, the left hook from Kenizali. Nice right up cut from barrier. Oh, and a good right hand from barrier. That's, that's the punch that he needs to use more often. And another going one from barrier. He's catching Kenizali's over the top, he's countering it very, very well at this stage. It's really become a battle now between the Canazala's left hook and Berrio's counter right. some action from that run and it's all he's catching with the right hand and Berrio countering with the right uppercut. Well, Berri uh, Berrio threw that right uppercut very smartly in that piece of action. Another punch that he's used very much but when he did use it then it looked very Order. good in doing it and then hooked over the top with the right hand. starts with Canizola sweeping a right over the top. The, the right hand from Berrio now has stopped from going straighter and in a cross fashion into a shorter hook. He's coming in closer with it and trying to get in more to the champion and deliver it. And Canizola's counters beautifully with his own right. But you heard in between rounds, Canizola's training, trainer saying, don't come straight at him, that's when you get caught with the right hand. He's moving side to side now which nullifies that right hand to, to a certain degree. I think Canizales knows with all these experience that he has in front of him here, a, a very tough and determined young challenger who's not giving ground at all. And Perio changes to Southport for the first time in this fight. Yes, we've noticed in trading he does that. He switches from side to side quite easily which is surprising because his real power is in his right hand. Now he goes back to the orthodox again. But both fights are showing a lot of class here, both countering nicely. What a great right hand from Canizola. His catch is very uh, high up on the head. It's very uh, more intent on using the left jab rather than anything else at this stage. Perhaps looking for the way of pushing Catazola's back just enough to, get to unload with the right. His left jab's a pretty potent pu punch too. He's, when it lands, there seems to be quite a lot of power in it. There certainly is a lot of, a lot of power in and he lines him up with a powerful right hand. There's Canizales on the attack. Well, it's Canizales who does the damage when they're in close, but he's having a bit of struggle getting past Berrio, when Berrio does want to keep it at long range. Of course, the challenger does have a slight height and reach advantage, and that can be used to advantage here. This 
Kenny Zola is a busy fight to the two. Berio, a nice right attempt from Berio catching him once again on the side of the head. But he needs to pick his work rate up, I think, does Berio. Well, there he threw a right hand connected but got tipped with Kenny Zola's own right. Great deal of respect being shown by both men at this stage. They're not prepared to go in and wage a war as they were doing it only at the back. There, Canizales does go with the left and right of the head. Catches his man, but very all right. Time, time, extremely time. Well. which Orlando counters over and with his right. He really shook uh, Berrio with that right hand length. Hooked him neatly with the left there and followed through with the right hook. Canizal is more inclined to throw combinations here, but there he got tagged with a, a good right hand to the head from Berrio. You can see the power in Berrio's punches. Stop! Get the ice out of here. Referee is stopping the fight and telling the Barrio corner to move the ice out. Wipe it, wipe it. Got a lot of it on the floor, but here we go into the action. This is live boxing coming to you from the carousel on Mnet Supersport. And live boxing it is in the, a very lively Bantamweight Championship of the World for the IBF title on Cedric Kushner Sports Network. Linda Canizales, the defending world champion, IBF style, against Juvenile Berrio, a fit, very game and very determined young challenger from Colombia. And Berrio not seem intimidated by the great uh, Orlando Canizales. As we said earlier, it's Canizales' 13th title defense. But Berrio is giving as good as he takes it. Well, there's Canizales going in on the attack and starting to go down to the body. That left hand going into the body now. But in comes Berrio. That right hand over the top. Doesn't quite find his mark, but that's the punch that Canizales has to be aware of and has been warned by his corner. Last jab coming through from Berrio there. Berrio jabbing quite effectively. The, those jabs of his are good. He doesn't use them enough. It's amazing to see the shorter man landing with the jabs like Canizales is doing against Berrio. You get the feeling that somewhere along the line here, one of these is going to land with his big Sunday punch. And let's see what happens when it does go. There's the left hand from Canizales finding its mark. Oh, and a nice right from Berrio. Right down the groove onto the chin of Canizales. And yet they're both there standing going at one another. Two good punches, both taking the shots well. Neither of them, of course, ever been beaten inside the distance means they both ride shots very well and they're showing that up here in this ring. And right now it's Canizales on the attack and pushing Berrio around. Berrio trying to get into the body. That's not easy against Canizales. His elbows are tucked pretty close in whenever he gets caught. But now he does drop his hand and gets chopped on the side of the chin by a right hand. Certainly did, and he, but he rode with a the punch then. He shows a lot of lateral movement does uh, Canizales. He's Beth, it's hard to nail a guy like that down. But Berrio is capitalizing on that right hand. But it's Orlando trying more of the combinations up from now. Time, time! A little bit of head work coming from Berrio there at the end of the belt. As we end in round six. Minimum, you gotta put the fight to him a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Start getting that body loose and get into a rhythm. 
See both players up close. Peria scoring with the left jab. <laughs> Orlando throwing that right up cut, but he gets caught with the right hand from Beria. Yes, you see his left eye blink there as Barrio hit him with that right hand. <laughs> You come to think of it, they actually reached the halfway mark. Box. This fight's been so interesting, so absorbing, the rounds seem to have just gone by rapidly. Nice. We're into round seven already. Juvenile Barrio of Colombia challenging Orlando Canizales for his IBF Bantamweight Championship of the World and putting up a pretty good challenge here too. Stalking after Canizales now. Landing with that right hand to the head and here he goes, going for it now, going for broke it seems as, Can as Barrio. Was holding back in the last oh, couple of rounds, but there's a nasty low blow goes in. Oh, it's a warning from y Barry Yates. The Canizales is right back in there looking for his man. Landing with a right hand to the head, but... One wonders if Barry Oak is, is going to keep up this attack of his. Well, he's going to have to land. If you want the title, he's going to have to go and take it away from him. He's working to the body nicely. Orlando managing to slip some of those jabs that he's throwing now. Yes, if you want to beat a world champion, there's only one way to beat him, and that's go at him and take it away from him. You don't stand back and let him do the work. And they, Barrio's doing exactly that. He's getting in and he's fighting his life out to try and get that title. Great drive from Orlando Canizales. The catch is Barrio once again on the chin. One wonders how much more of this he can take then. Well, they're both absorbing quite a bit of punishment here, but Canizales does seem to be landing the heavier blows at the moment. They seem to be having the effect of getting Berrio to go backwards. And that's where Canizales wants him. Canizales takes the right hand to the head in order to get him close with his own left uppercut. Working his way into his challenger and banging away with the left hook. Looking, looking pretty determined now as the champion. He certainly is. He has in the uh, 12 base corner. Go and take him out. But we've seen footwork oh, seldom oh, seen in South oh, African rings. Right. That one more. Is all is just shown us tonight. One more. I'll take the point. Referee oh. warning Barrio. If I have to warn you once more for a low blow, I'll take a point off you. Oh, what a game challenger he is. He's got the champion against the ropes. Oh, he's put him everything he can into this effort to try and win the title if he's not doing bad in his effort either and he's just caught Orlando with a great right hand and again and again and again with two left jabs to the head misses badly with a right over the top but scored some pretty good punches there to juvenile Berrio the challenger Again, it's Canizales, the aggressor. He catches him once again with a nice right hand. Both boys landing with bombs. The, That's end, on the end of a very, very good round seven. Very nice round. Now you're working. Keep digging. Keep digging, keep touching, keep working. You're a champion. Work with your heart. Don't leave anything for the dressing room. You hear me? You'll get him out of here. You don't like it when you're pegging. Keep digging and keep jabbing. Here we see in the previous round, the low blow that Berrio was warned about, and should he do it again, they're going to deduct a point. All right. Those fights are very slick, down. and Orlando coming over that overhand right. Look at the size. Well, I've been trying to count the number of people in Barrio's corner. There seems to be a small army of them. But there at the, the 
challenger into action with that jabbing left hand of his. Oh, and a nice right. Didn't quite connect as, it, as he had hoped it would. Just bounced off the point of Canizales' chin. Berrio trying to steam up into a bit of more close range action here. He wants to get in on the fight now. Didn't succeed too well in the last round, and now he really wants to get into it. It's, there's not much in the scoring at this stage, but that's a good right from Canizales. Follows with the left hand to the head. And I think, if anything, we might say Canizales might just be that little bit ahead on points at this stage. Yeah, I've, I've got him slightly ahead on points then, but that left hook catches Berrio, and his legs uh, give a little bit beneath him. But it's both boys concentrating mainly on that right hand up till now. Well, that's, of course, with the Canizales left hook, which we know so much as his real big punch. He'd been holding back a great deal on it, but he didn't let it go there. That shook Berrio, and he has to be aware he doesn't get caught with a couple more of those because they're dangerous. Canizales keeps Berrio guessing, and he catches him with a beautiful right hand. Canizales finding his range and picking his punches much better now. But Berrio seems to take them quite well and come right back into the fight. Tough little fighter is this challenger. Certainly is. Never say die, but he gets caught again with a combination. One wonders how many of those left and rights like that he can take. That's right, no man. matter how tough you are, they're going to tell on you eventually when you're up against a puncher like Canizales. But the beauty of Canizales is the way he moves from side to side and he counters so beautifully with other hand. As Canizales certainly stepped up the pace in this eighth round. He's, he's really moving in stronger into the second half of the fight. Looking for his man, looking for the chance for that to get in more of those big shots of his. He's got the challenge against the ropes. Doesn't work to his advantage when he changes to southpaw, I don't think. I think he takes away the power of his own right hand, which didn't work to any great extent. He can't afford to, to make a mistake like that at the moment anyway. Because Canizal is really looking the superior puncher of the pair at this stage. Catches that, the left hand goes in again, and he follows with the right. Deducting a point from Berrio for hitting off to the bell there. Orlando Canizola is catching him regularly now. There goes right. the left. I want to do up here. Sit down. The left down. Down. Rocked down. the challenger backwards. And a right like that does an awful lot of damage. Well, we're yes. two-thirds of the way through what has but. been a most absorbing battle for the Bantamweight Championship of the World, the IBF title with challenger Juvenal Berrio still trying his hardest to get in there and make a fight of it to take the fight to the champion. But he's up against a wily old champion who knows his way around the ring, and he isn't fighting it all, at all easy. In fact, at times, he's fighting it rather tough. Certainly is, Len, and immediately it's Kenny Zolis on the attack. Berrio tries to work the body. But this uh, Orlando oozes class, Len, and one wonders how long he's going to hold on to this world title. Well, this is defense number 13. He was asked before, do you think that's unlucky? No superstitions, he said. And he doesn't look like it, although taking a right and a left from Ferio like that and another right is a bit dangerous. Nice punching coming from the challenger. Well, the challenger's going to have to pick up the pace. After getting a point deducted last round, he could have lost around 10-8. Yes, he needs to go full out now if he wants... 
three and a half rounds to go and he needs to play, use every minute of it to his advantage. The jab starting to work quite nicely, catching Orlando Pinizola's pass there with that jab. Pushing Canizalo the way with the left hand. The right missing as it goes over the top. Can't quite find his range with the right hand. But he's the left hand using very effectively. Perio looking a lot better in this round than he did in the previous. Perio boxing very smartly and doing some neat defensive work and a nice right catches the champion on the forehead. Both boys displaying great jabs here. And it's a nice one to come from Orlando Canizoli. The pace, of course, a little bit slower in this round, but you can expect that. They still have quite a long way to go. There's a good overhand left from the champion finds its mark. The pace, of course, had to tell a little bit at one stage because it is hot in this tent. It's tremendously hot, uh, Lennon, with those overhead lights here. But the guys have put a tremendous performance here. Orlando Kenizol is a two-fisted attacking fighter. And Berrio has done himself proud here up until this point. Well, Berrio's kept himself in the fight. He might have flagged off for a round or two previously, but he's right back in now. He's looking pretty good. Boxing very neatly. Using the ring well and jabbing well. Overhand right comes through. Ten! power in it but that was a good round for the challenger and there we see Orlando Kenizola slipping underneath that left jab and countering with some jabs of his own not many power punches thrown in that round, Len. Both guys content to let the jab go, but there Berrio catches him with a nice overhand right. Yes, so it was a boxing round, and it was Berrio doing the boxing. Round 10, three Four, rounds to go. Up. It's been an absorbing fight, and one in which the challenger has showed up so well at the beginning, faded away a bit, but he's come right back in the last round. Let's see if he can keep up the tempo. That's right, and trainer Jesse Reed saying that the fight should be over by now. Kenny Zolis must put on the pressure, like he's doing right now, getting Barry out to step backwards. Berrio seems to be content to do one punch at a time now. He's not putting his combinations together like he was earlier on. Not at all, Lennon. That's not going to win him a world title. But it's a great right hand, but fortunately it goes just over Orlando's head. Yes, he must get right into it. He must start building up the right, building up the punches. That's what he's doing. Gets clipped by Canizola, but at the same time, he's doing the most punching. And he needs to really force the pace now. Oh, but a right hand like that can do him a lot of damage. And he counters with one of his own there, Lynn. But he's going to have to start throwing punches and bunches for the judges to take note of him. Nice left hand got through from the challenger. Mario still full of determination. Made this a winning fight all the way through. Oh, there's the right hand and the left from the challenger. Dario scored with two whacking good blows there. Canizales, is he shaken or is he just boxing his way out? But he's, those were good shots coming in from the, the Colombian. They were good shots, but he walks into a left hook from Canizales and a right hand from Canizales. This is toe-to-toe toe -to -toe at the moment. Both scoring with right hand uppercuts. Another fighter giving an inch, and it's Berrio on the attack now. Yes, Berrio's made a L when he takes some punches as he comes in to get on top of Canizales. 
and he's hit by three good shots from the champion but he's still forcing the pace referee warning barrio for using the head canizales immediately moves into him oh. it's a dangerous left hook barrio is going to have to watch out for But he's forcing the pace. He's got Canizales on his back foot. Yes, he's really doing the right thing here. That's what he's got to do. Take the fight to the champion, and that's exactly what he's doing. All the old wiliness of the old warrior being shown here as Canizales moves himself out of trouble. But a little bit of trouble he is in every now and again. And what a great turn from both parts of Zelen. Here we see the combination punching of Berrio catching Orlando with that right hand. But Orlando comes back and counters with his own left hook. Both guys showing left hooks there, Len. There's that right hand that stunned Berrio, but he comes straight back with the left hook to the body. You know, as we come up to round 11, there's an interesting aspect to this. The IBF have just introduced a rule that if there's a draw in a title fight, they fight a deciding 13th round. It only came in about two months ago, and this one's so close. What happens if we have a draw here? Are we going to have a deciding 13th? Well, that would be interesting. But uh, Berrio is going to have to pull out all the stops in his last two rounds. He could be slightly behind on points. Well, he certainly showed up well in the previous two. And if he can keep up that pace, he's going to make it awfully, awfully close. And he catches Orlando with a great left hook there. Another great drive ten. Orlando is getting caught with both hands now. The challenger knows he's got to do everything in his power now. He's, he lost that point earlier on. It's touch and go, and he's got to get in there and make it willing and keep the fight on top of the champion. He's punching with pinpoint accuracy as Berrio. You don't win a world title by running away from the title holder and letting him do the work. You've got to get in there and take it to him. Oh, both landed with good right hand. A right hand from Canizales. The right came over from Berrio. They both landed simultaneously and both were shaken for that moment. Well, what an action pack fight up from now then. And Berrio's gonna have to increase his work rate here. But he really has improved in these last two rounds as Berrio. Some of his punching going a little bit wild in this round. And I think the, the pace and the heat starting to tell a little bit on both men, but more on Berrio, it seems. Nice right hand from the challenger. You get the impression that he's trying to get Canizales to lead with that left so he can counter with the right. That's, really, that's his chance of really coming in. There's still Orlando Canizales, is the aggressor. Because Berrio has been landing some very clean blows this round. Sweeping left hand goes over the top. Catches Berrio, uh, catches Canizales on the top of the head. And you get the idea that they saving everything for a really full ball last round, which is going to come up. But there's a nice right hand from Canizales. That spun Berrio back onto the ropes. But right he comes back right on top, forcing the champion. And the right hand goes through. That right hand caught the champion flush on. Three balls and punches plays at the end of it. It's a good round 11 and there's one round to go. And then we 
you see Kenny Zola slipping the punch, but he gets caught by the right hand as he comes in. That round, we certainly saw two-fisted action coming from both fighters. Nice left hook. Kenny Zola's catches Perry and he counters with one of his own. Well, there we are, round 12 of an absorbing IBF Bantamweight title fight in which Juvenile Berrio from Colombia has put in a tremendous effort against reigning champion Orlando Canizales. It's been a great fight all the way. Canizales, the old veteran, the master of ring craft, just keeping ahead of his challenger, but the challenger has really made a gutsy fight of it. He's gone all the way, tried to take it to the champion, and this is the last round, and I think this is going to be the decider. Well, then this is going to be a war this last round because Perry has gotten to the fight in the last couple of rounds. And uh, once again, he's got Orlando Kenizola stuck against the ropes. Another warning for Barrio using the shoulder as he goes in close. And it's Kenizola's blazing away, but he finds the challenger right on top of him with all, all the time. And as Perry are putting the pressure on Kenny Zola, here in the last round, trying to impress the judges in this last effort. Well, he's done pretty well in the last three, four rounds of the fight. And I think he needs, he thinks that if he can really put in a good last round effort, which he's doing, he might just sneak it. Stop, stop, and he pours him with the head, the referee. Point, point, the point, point goes away from yeah, the challenger for the use of the head. And that could be a very, very decisive point. Referee Barry Yates stopped the fight and said, Barrio was using his head. And that's a very vital point. Now the challenger knows that he's going full out. It's a war as both men swing away at each other here. Well, Lynette can certainly discourage the challenger. He's been putting everything into it these last couple of rounds. And he's coming. He Back twice with some beautiful right hands. Twice he's caught that, the champion with that right hand of his. Well, it is still Berrio on the attack, forcing the champion back, catches him with a good right up at the uppercut to the head. Canazal is looking a little weary now. The corner is Berrio trying to force it. Canazal is happy to swing out right hands and keep his opponent away. Well, Perry are looking the stronger of the two here in the last round, which is quite amazing after all the hot punches that he's absorbed during this contest. Well, he's lost himself two points for infringements during the fight, and that could be very decisive because it's been close all the way. <laughs> That's the end of the fight. And a jubilant... Berrio bounces back to his corner, hands held high. Canizales just walks back. No show of emotion, goes back to his corner. Well, it's a close one. Do you think the two points will change everything? Then I think it could. And here we see slow-mo from that last round. Canizales firing away with both hands. Not the, none of the punches really landing there. There's Berrio's overhand right that catches him. But I think it's those, uh, those two points deducted yeah. could definitely cost him. Fighting. There we see Berrio scoring with that left jab. And Orlando loading up and landing square on the chin there with his right hand. Well, he, he certainly... He certainly took Canizales as big big blums without much trouble. He certainly did, and in the same vein, Kenny Zolas took some tremendous punches. He's got an iron jaw as Orlando, and there's and there the you see the head go in. Oh, yes, the head did go in there. Certainly did, and quite rightly, referee Yates took the point away. 
It's amazing. Ken is all he shows no emotion at all. No showmanship. He gets down to business. And what a skillful fighter. One of the best that we've seen grace the South African ring, I think, then. Well, we've seen two great Bantamweight championships of the world previously when Vicky Tawil and, and Arnold Taylor won the title. Tonight we've seen one between two outsiders, but what a great little battle it's been. I shouldn't think they'll take long in scoring up the cards because in IBF title fights, the judges hand in their scorecards at the end of every round. come now it's to come from supervisor Walter Stone he comes from Providence in the United States and there's an anxious lot of people in this ring there's anxious champion in his corner he must wonder if he has done enough to get there and the challenger who feels he has done enough, but are those two points going to go against him? Well, it's touch and go. Well, it certainly is, Len. You know, both corners look pretty confident. And there we see Kenny Zolas walking around the ring, looking pretty pleased with himself. There certainly is that oh, little army in the corner of the challenger. And here's Darren Scott collecting the official scorecards. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges score this fight as follows. Judge Bukwana scores the fight. 116-112. Judge Hernandez scores the fight. 116-112. Judge Ray Jr. scores the fight. 116-110 for the winner. And still, IBF Bantamweight Champion of the World, Orlando Canizales. Well, there you have the result. Orlando Canizales, mostly by about four points, the winner. Those two points and two others that he scored on his own. A close winner, but perhaps deserved against a very, very gallant challenger, Juvenile Berrio, Ladies here in the carousel. The world champion with the IBF belt, Orlando Canizales. That's his 13th successful title defense. Two to go to break the world record. We've seen a boxing legend in his time defending his title here in the carousel tonight. Orlando Canizales, the winner.